Fox Scott, thank you for the host, by the way. Okay, we're finally ready to start. Cool, cool. So anyway, um, I'm going to start this tutorial off assuming that you have an avatar from like the old version of um, VRChat. And this is what's happened to it, basically. We have a missing mono script. If we go to the SDK, show control panel, it's gonna say there isn't an avatar descriptor. Um, so yes, we're gonna start off assuming this is where you're at right now. This is an avatar, but you just imported the new SDK or you imported it to a new project, hopefully. But you didn't erase everything you did. Um, I'm using Suva. Hanu. Boop. But anyway, um, so the first thing we're gonna wanna do, probably, is remove this broken um, avatar descriptor script. It will not function and there's nothing we can do to make it function. So we're just gonna remove it and we're going to maybe remove the pipeline manager and we're going to add component DRC avatar descriptor, the new one. All right, so now you see that um, this is the new avatar descriptor. Um, I'm gonna turn this down so I can like hear myself think. So this is the new avatar descriptor. Um, it's a little bit different. <laughs> so first thing we're gonna wanna do is find the view position. Now, oh my goodness, it happened to there too. Um, I, you know what, I'm just gonna like, uh, uh, I'm just gonna hide that for now. I'm gonna need it later anyway. But anyway, yes. So we have the avatar descriptor here. Um, it's a little bit different. So the first thing we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna find the view position. Now, if you're familiar with that before, like you'd like move the values this way or type them in, now you can just press edit and we can move them where we want them to be. So I'm gonna put it, oh my goodness. Right. So yes. Right. So we can move the avatar descriptor. Blah. Return. So we have this viewpoint and we can move it to where we want it to be. I'm gonna move this where we want it to be, but I'm a little bit more traditional, so I'm gonna round it down to what I usually put in a Nazis out, which is 05075. Um, and then we can press return. And now it's locked into place. So just hit this button and you can move the descriptor where you want it to. So now we're gonna set up lip sync and the mode we want is Visine blend shape. So Visine parameter basically lets you add a, um, basically lets you add um, whatever you want on a parameter. If you can animate it, then it can work as the shape keys, basically. So parameter only is if you want to make it so that you can create an animator controller that will control the lip sync that way, if that is something you want. Um, but we're going to send a blend shape as usual, body, and it'll autofill most of the time. So it's already autofilled that. We're going to enable eye look too. Now, you'll see these four controls here, and they might confuse you at first. Calm, excited, shy, confident. Now, um, you know how in VR chat your eyes will automatically like dart around, look at things, or look at people, and they'll blink? So um, this controls like their behavior at that. If you're calm, your eyes will dart around less. If you're excited, they'll dart around more. If you're shy, your eyes will avert the gaze of other people more. If you're confident, it will avert the gaze of other people less. So I'm going to put that in neutral for now. Because I don't know what Kimo would want on that front. So now we're going to add, going down, for the, down the list more, we're going to go to these. Now, we want a left eye bone and a right eye bone. This is a lot like how the old SDK was. So, we're going to neck, head, we're going to find the left eye. And we're going to find the right eye. All right. Now the rotation states. Um, this controls how much your eyes roll in the head when they are being used for, um, when they're being like animated, basically. Like, see how my eyes are like rolling in my head? This controls how much they can do that. So this is straight ahead. That doesn't need to be touched most of the time. Now looking up. We're going to put it so that it's looking up. Um, 35 is good, I think return and we're going to be looking down again i think 35 is all right maybe 25 for this yeah return and um right so this is something that you wouldn't know unless you already know it so i'm going to say it right now 
if you click the empty space between between here, like this empty space here on any of these values, it will split it left and right. There used to be an icon there in the beta, or in the alpha build, and I don't know what happened to it. But yes, if you click here, um, it will split the eyes left and right so you have more control over it. I, I don't know why there's no icon there or any indication you can do that, but that is how you do that. Um, so anyway, if I have the eyes split, that means I can move them independently for what I want them for. So if I want them looking left, um, I will put them this way, and I'll make it so that that's there, that's there. Oh. 0, 25, 35, I like rounding down. And we're going to do the opposite for here. So for looking right, it's going to be positive 25. Oh! And it's going to be positive 35. Yes. Return. All right. So now we have these all set up too. All right. Uh, I kind of want to make this one 25. Uh, yeah, this should be 25 as well. Uh, yeah, okay. Yes, you could make Derpy as a thing. And now here's where the new shape keys, which is why I went into Maya for initially, for it comes into shape. Eyelid type, blend shapes. Um, so if you put it at none, then I don't think it will be, it will affect it. So if you don't have the new shapes, you can just leave it at none and the eyes won't, and the eyelids won't animate with the eyes. I like, I'm more of a completionist, so I like doing all of that. So I'm just going to show you that right now. Body and blink. It, we're going to want a blink emote, so blink. Actually, yeah, come to think of it, if you don't set this up, then you're never going to blink. So, bah. looking up and look down. All right, so that's all set up. I'm just going to like center this a little bit more. Bop, bop, bop. Hello. Hello. Oh, hi, Queen. All right. So anyway, now this is all we would have to do if we just wanted to upload it as is without any like special gestures or anything. We're done, basically. This is a done avatar. This will upload. If I go to VR Chat SDK, show control panel. This avatar is mint mapped. Auto fix that. And yeah, this will work. So th this is the basic, basic setup for Avatars 3, once you have all that set up. Um, the only thing that would be a hindrance would be that eye thing. Um, otherwise, you won't be able to blink. Right. Blend shape look up and down to dial how we want. Uh, We're going to get to tell how much of the blend shapes look up and down to dial how we I mean, I guess you could do that in animation if you do a parameters only. I haven't tried parameters only yet but you should be able to fine tune it that way if you want to. But, okay, so now here's the issue though. Um, Kima, he has um, animation. See, he's got fist, fluster, handgun. Like if I drag and drop down here, you can see he's got like all these like gestures and hand gestures. Right, so if we want to like have these like old gestures back, we're going to have to create a gesture animator controller. And what we're going to do there is we are going to go to play, playable layers. We are going to hit the button to customize it. And then you see we have all these like layers here. Base layers, base additive gesture action effects. Um, if I recall correctly, let me check the documentation. Yeah. In the documentation it explains how all of these work and what each of them are used for. Base layer contains locomotion animations, including blend sheets. So base will basically uh, control your walking and basic, like all the automatic movement that your character does, like when it's animated, if you want to make that custom. Additive is, uh, yeah, additive would be like for breathing and like stuff that happen like automatically while your avatar is doing everything else. So additive would be added on top of base and it would be playing automatically on top of it. Gesture is basically what it sounds like. But like the key issue, point. the key difference is that gesture can only control like bone animations on the human hierarchy. So 
you would use the gesture mostly for um, controlling bone transformations on your avatar. So that would be like your ears, your tail, if it's part of the avatar hierarchy here. It has to be part of the same armature skeleton. Your fingers, like if you're not using index, your fingers. Um, so now we have we come to action. The action layer um, would be for like things that completely take control of your avatar. So this would be like custom dance animations and stuff like that, or like emotes like waving, like the ones that you see there. Oh, thank you for the bits, yes. Um, FX is for literally everything else. FX is for basically everything else. It will work on the FX layer as long as it's not a bone transform. Um, FX layers do work on bone transforms if they aren't part of like the main skeleton of the avatar. So if they're like, inventory headphones under here and this, if this had an armature bone I wanted to enable then um, that's where I would put that there as well. So now the special animation sitting P T pose, IK pose, these are for like um, redoing the IK animation, sitting animation, not sure what T pose does but again um, if you go into here docs.vrchat.com docs playable layers um, it'll like explain exactly how all this works. But um, anyway so if we wanted to create just gestures, just regular gestures, um, what we would do is um, first we would create an override controller for that. Now I could create my own and I probably would, but for ease for everyone's use, if we go to the VR chat folder, VRC SDK, actually last time I remember this was broken, um, but if we go to VRC SDK examples three, animation and controllers um, VR chat has provided some example per controllers for us to use um, I believe there is a hand in here somewhere action let ah oh, here we go here we go yes 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 avatar 3 hand yes so left hand and right hand I, I'm sorry I missed it I missed it completely so anyway yes in this folder there are prefabs um, yes if we go into VR chat SDK examples 3 animation controllers um they did ha they do have some set up here so hand idle i just want to make sure it's the right one hand layer and layer two these are slightly different i want to make sure that this one's the right one let's see blah blah blah, blah, blah. conditional statements yes your left equals two so if you want to use this you can but yeah i think we're going to use this so um but i do want to go over how this works and how you would be able to make something like this. Um, so basically, everything works off of animator parameters. And under the documentation, here's a list of all the valid parameters that you have. Um, so here's the AFK, seated, grounded, upright, velocity, angular, gesture left, gesture right, gesture left, weight, right, weight, visim is local, expressions one through 16, which are used to find, which we will get into separately. Um, and yeah, how neutral fist hand open victory rock and roll under the indexes, but yes, so let me just double check and make sure I want to do this the way I do. So I think I'm just going to take avatar v3 hands layer, duplicate that, and this will be the basis for our, um, and this will be the basis for our new, um, thing. So, hema and I will put that in the folder here, so... Hima. Alright. Click up asset. And now Kima overrides is in here, and it is the same. So, now that we have the left hand and right hand here, um, so how this is working is the entry position goes into a hand's idle animation, which could be blank. But it's going proxy hands idle, which is a default VR chat one. So um, this is the entry to the idle animation, and then it goes into a state machine, which then can then transfer to any state. So how this is working is the proxy is the parameters that are already set are gesture left, gesture left weight, right, and right weight. So the conditional statement trans. So say if it was to con transition to fist, it will go from any state, which means it can go from any um, position. And it needs to meet the condition gesture left equals one because i believe this is a f integer no it's yeah no yeah it's an integer value of one so gesture left equals one goes into fist 
and the same applies to these gesture lists equals two, three, four, and so on, and five. Now the actual like animations themselves have a normalized time of gesture left wait. This makes it so you could like blend between them rather than them just snapping in between like poses. Um, if it's not working, Waber. Um, if it's not working, Waber, then um, just uh, start a new project. That's all I can say. But now, um, what if we wanted to add these to like the same thing like it was before? So under this um, under this um, one that we just added, the Kima overrides, fist gun open. Um, I have the old project open right here. Um, select prefab asset. And I have them here, so I'm gonna use put this over here and just copy it over. So under here, finger point is set to point. So point is set to point, which is somewhere. Hello? Point. Am I missing it? Oh, here it is. Right, so I'm going to change it here. So you see what I did there? I just click on the animation and drag my old animation into it. So open was hand open. So now both the left and right hand are set up. Now um, I want to like go into this so that people understand how this works, <coughs> even though it's already set up here. Now um, the weight of the layer should always be set to one. I don't know why all part why all parts needs to be here. Like it's not doing anything, is it? Not really doing anything. So actually, it probably has like VRC hands only. Okay, yeah, there we go. Here's the hand left. So now um, I'm actually going to have to create a new controller rather than use the VR chat one. So I'm going to delete these or like not delete them, but like delete them from here. Now, um, if this was to go on the gesture layer, which it needs to do in order for this to work, um, it needs to have an avatar mask on it. And I'm going to get into creating an avatar mask right now. So we're going to select the revamp asset just to go back here. We're going to go to create animation, I believe somewhere in here. Yeah, here it is. Avatar mask. And we're going to name it Kima or er, why not? Right. Hmm. Non R. So now um, if we put this here and we have this set up to here. So um, what an avatar mask does is it makes it that so only specific like areas of an avatar are affected by it. Now, um, if this these are gonna these are obviously gonna go in the gesture layer. If they wanted to work as gestures, they need to have a mask on them. So what we're going to do is we're gonna go into this avatar mask and we're going to select the areas of the body that these will take. These are this is the right hand, right? So we're just gonna make sure that only the right hand is selected. And if we want to add custom transforms, since I usually have like animations on my ears and tails, my ear and tails, um, what we're going to do is we're going to copy the skeleton over from, from Kima V2, I believe. Import skeleton, toggle all, so we're going to turn all off. And we're going to add the bones we want to move with it. So that would be all the ears. So root ears, ears are, ba 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 ba. You only have to make one of these once and you can like copy it across like different avatars. I already have one of these pre-made for my own avatars, but I'm showing you guys here so that you guys understand. Um, and we're gonna do the same for the hips. Where's the tail, root tail, 
um, tail, bop, 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 bop. You know what, I can just, yeah, that's easier. So we're gonna take all these, select them, and now we have created a mask. So now what I'm gonna do is duplicate that mask, make it hand L, and the only thing we're gonna change on this mask is this. There we go. So now we need to add the mask here too for the left hand, so NAN L, NAN R, that's already set up. And now, if we wanted to add these to here as like custom gestures, we're going to click the effects layer and the gesture layer because the FX layer will handle the shape keys for the blend shape for the face and the gesture will handle like the bone animations for transforming the ears, the tail, and the hand for moving the ears, tail, and hand. So what we're going to do is we're going to put chemo overrides in here and we're going to put chemo overrides in here. Now you shouldn't set it up this way. I'm going to preface that right now. Um, you should always, how VRChat would like it is you create a separate animation that just has the shape, the blend shape keys and another animation that just has the bone transforms. I'm not gonna do that because that's a lot of extra work, um, but this is not the correct the correct way to do it. Um, and you'll see like when I make this more advanced that I'll, be del I'll separate this into gesture and effects and just delete the things that are necessary. I'm also gonna say right now, if you just like, if you add a ton of stuff to your avatar and you just do this, things will not work, they will break. Um, like say you have a face that like overrides like an ear control, it won't work. The ear control won't work or the face won't work. Something won't work. Okay. So you want to like have a separate gesture and a separate effects layer. Yes, you can. Um, now this should in theory work. I don't know if it needs an expression menu to work, but I'm pretty sure it doesn't. Now what I've done just now, this would be how you would fix the avatar essentially so that it would upload. So if I go to VRChat SDK, show control panel, um, and I went to builder, and you see now we have this new build and test button, which is super handy. So that way you're just building it locally and storing it locally on your machine rather than uploading to a server just to make sure things work. So I'm going to build a test avatar right now, and I'm going to launch VRChat and and um, do a hypothesis. So yes, we could stop here if we want to, because basically this whole gesture thing would apply to like legacy avatars too, like say if you have like inventory system or whatever. So in theory, in theory, because I've already heard reports that it's broken for some avatars and not broken for others, you, if you have like an old inventory system gestures, you could like literally do what I just did there and be done with it and that would be the end of it and then you technically basically have a ported avatar to avatar but i'm also but i also want to get into the new stuff too the new stuff that you can do so i'm just going to test this right now to just confirm that this is all you need to make it work work and we're going to go to other which is what has it change and let's check our gestures here yes yeah, so our gestures work so this is it this is it this is what you would need to do to, and you see that it's still working on my hand, see? Like the fingers pointing and everything. Um, yeah. Fingers are pointing, go here. Oh, that's not working, weird. Maybe it did need that actually. Maybe it does need a um maybe it does need like an extra layer over it. That's the only thing I could think of. Which probably um explained why that was there in the first place. Yeah, you know what? That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna operate under that assumption. Did it fix? 
Yes, it did. Okay, cool. 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 We figured it out. Right, so you need to have in the gesture layer a blank layer that has every part that you want to animate on it as a layer mask layer. And then under there, you can put all of your other parts. So that was there for a purpose. And I learned that, and now I know why that's there. Cool. So anyway, this is it. We could stop here. Um, the avatar is complete, and anything that you have on like the old um, inventory system would work this same way. Just drag it into the controller. And again, you can find that controller in the VRC SDK under examples 3. Just duplicate it out, put your animations in, and you're good to go. And just put it on the gesture layer and the effects layer. The effects would be for like the face animations and the gesture would be for the hand animation. So yes, that is how that would work. We could stop here, but I'm also going to get into some new some new stuff we can do here. Like so for example, um if you're if you're familiar with how the um old um inventory system works, inventory remapper works and stuff, like yeah, that's no longer necessary. So what if um the only thing I could really do to Kima here is like have a toggle so this pants like is enabled or disabled. So we're gonna select prefab asset. Enable it so we can off. get Yes, yes, we're gonna take Kima's pants off. So now we're gonna create some new animations and so I don't confuse it with the old one. I'm gonna go create folder anim v3 AV anim AV3. Yeah. Right, so now we're going to Create an animation, just a regular animator controller. This is good, just going to be a junk animator controller that we're going to throw on here to be able to animate it. So now we're going to create some clips. And it's AV3. So headphones off. Right. So I'm going to throw that into record mode. I'm going to add a property because I'm pretty sure the headphones are going to have its own um, thing on it. And if, if it has its own animator controller, then um, armature, hips, spine, chest, headphones is active. I'm going to add that. And headphones off. Delete it. This is another. Th yes. So um, another thing with Avatars 3 is, so you know how in like the old animations in here, um, so in the old animations you need to have a key on 0 and a key on 1? That's no longer necessary, and in fact it might actually work better if you delete the secondary key. So now it's just a key on 0. It actually works better that way if you do it. Um, I might actually just go in and do all that. but. Um, I don't know, it appears to work fine here, but I know from experience that it's not ideal when it comes to Avatars 3 stuff. So depending on how you have it implemented, um, it's just better to just have it on a single keyframe. So now I've created that first headphones off gesture. I'm going to copy that frame. We're gonna create a new clip. So now we have the, all these new animations we made. We can safely delete our animator controller. I don't think there's anything else we're going to add. So we're just going to delete the animator controller, delete the avatar that we aren't using now. Right. So now, um, how are we going to add all this new stuff that we just created here? Well, we're going to have to create some parameters. So here's where we're going to get into the meat of it. Um, so what we're going to do is select like Revive Asset. So oh, yeah, here's where we get into the meat of the tutorial. Um, we're gonna go back to our overrides and we're gonna create some new layers. So 
if we want to start with the inventory system, we're going to create a layer for... Hmm. Pants. So we're going to need pants. And we're going to set its weight to 1, because all everything has to be set to 1. All the weights need to be set to 1. Um, and we're going to create a new parameter. We can name it whatever we want. We're going to make it an integer, but we're going to name it pants. Int. Right. So now with our new pants layer, we are going to create a new animation. So we're going to go here and pants on is the default. So we're going to make a transition here to pants on and we're going to make a conditional statement here. So we're going to add a conditional statement, pants int equals zero. This is the default state. So now we're going to make a transition to a new one. So we're going to go to pants off, and we're going to make a transition, and we're going to do the same thing here. Pants int equals one. So this is the basic like inventory system. I've literally just created an inventory system right here. This is it. This is, this is, that's all you have to do. So it reads from the entry. The entry is always going to be pants on. That's the first thing it's going to read from. And, um, hi Billy. And, um, based on, and then it'll default into an any state where it can transfer from either one of these states. And pants in equals zero is the default. Pants in equals one is the new one. So now that we've created that pants, um, what we are going to do is we are going to go back to the main folder and we're going to create a new asset. We're going to go to create VR chat avatars expression parameter and I'm going to name this Hema Expert. So this is basically where everything you make in the animated controller plugs into VR chat. Um, if we go to the, so you see there um, we have like all these parameters here. So I can literally, so parameter four, we named pants. So pants int is what we named it, correct? Let me just double check that. Make sure it's case sensitive. Make sure it is exactly 100% correct here. So pants int and under the expression parameter, pants int, and it is in fact an integer. So now what we're going to do is under the avatar controller, um, under expressions, we're going to hit customize and it's going to ask for the parameters that we just created. So I put Kima expressions here and it also wants a menu for us to drive that. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to create VR chat avatars expressions menu. So now we're going to call this Kima UI and here's where a lot of like the control comes into it. So this is where it actually becomes an inventory system. So the, this is basically, so the new um, radial menu that you see, if you notice, seen any of the example avatars, you see they have custom buttons and custom values and all that stuff. This is where all that's created. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add a new control and we're going to call it pants. And it's going to ask, what is it going to be? Here we can add an icon. I can go into... I have a pants here from, I have a pants icon here. Ken's drew all these custom icons for me and they're a really good friend and yeah. yeah. So anyway, we're gonna take this to a type and we're going to make it a toggle switch. And if it asks for a parameter, we're gonna make it pants int and its value is gonna be one. So that's it. So now if I go here, go in the scene, go scroll down to the avatar controller and we go to Kima UI and we're going to put that under the menu. And if I upload this, here, chat SK, show control panel, builder, build and test. Okay, I like home. Well, well, I'm going to make a video. I, I'm sorry if I'm going a little bit fast.
A long use. Alright. Alright. Uh. Oh, right, I was too close to the mirror. Anyway. So now, um. What I'm going to do is. Turn off world sounds. I'm going to go to expressions, pants. And as you can see. I created a toggle switch and now I can do the rest of that with everything else as well so I'm gonna go back into here and we're going to basically fill up that entire menu So now we've set up all that stuff, um, we're going to set up something a little bit more complex than just like toggling things on and off. Um, so now we're going to get into like um, a directional ear, ear eh, bah, bah, tail control. Um, so to do that we're going to add a new expression tail under parameter 7, float. You have 16 of these to work with so if you can like find ways to compress them that's cool. Like what you could do is you can create like a state machine and like swap it to an any state under a parameter and it could be an integer that goes from one to a hundred even if you wanted to honestly I kind of wanted to see like how many like slices of the radio menu I can add before VR chat just breaks but that's for that's for another day um, anyway so how do we create the tail gesture because it's not just like enabling and disabling something, it's got like a lot of other stuff on it. So what we're going to do here is we're going to create a new layer, call it tail wiggle, tail wiggle. And we're going to create the new parameter. And actually, actually yeah, let me just um, remove these. We're going to create two new parameters here. We're going to create a float value and call it tail move h and we're going to create another float value and call it tail move v. So one will move it horizontal, the other will move it vertically. So um, that'll be for like a radial menu. So now we have the tail move here, so we have tail wiggle. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a new blend tree. And we're going to call this tail move. And in this blend tree, um, we're going to create a 2D freeform Cartesian. And we're going to make the horizontal movement tail movement H and tail movement V. And we're going to create some motion. So we're going to add a motion field and we're going to add a few of these. So we're going to add five of these. One in the complete center and a few in the other areas. So now what we could do is we could like click and drag these into place. So if I went to zero, 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 zero. Now if we clicked all these and drag them into place like this, we could like create, I guess, gestures here. But um, what we're going to want to do is make them a little bit more fine-tuned than that. So, what, one, two, four, five. Uh, I don't need like six of them, I just need five of them. So anyway, yeah, we have five here. So what we're going to do is put one at zero. Now, um, when you're setting this up, you don't want to go over zero seven. Because um, the way this was explained to me, um, because the thumbstick is circular it calculates for pi so it can't physically move to one it can only go as far as zero seven from what i've been told so when you set up these radial menus like to work with the joystick you're going to want to set 
you're gonna have you want to remember that zero seven is the maximum. So um, zero seven zero zero point seven negative zero point seven zero point seven zero zero zero. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add these in. So we're gonna make this our tail default. So this one over here is going to be our tail neutral. And this one right here is going to be our tail left, right? I think it's tail left. Yeah. Yeah, this is tail left. I don't know my left from my right, I'm sorry. And this is gonna be tail right. And this one is going to be tail down. And this one's going to be tail up. So now if we want to preview this, we can put the avatar in here. And we can pretend this is our joystick and we can simulate it this way. So yeah, go from here. Yeah, so as you can see, it's uh, moving how the animation is set. I set the tail up to like this. So yeah, you got that tail up, this is tail down, left and right. So yeah, that's basically how that's set up. This is a side thing, but are there any auto quick ways to tell Blender to list my blend shapes like just Alphabet or how they had, I had it as in Maya? Um, which version of Blender are you using? If it's 08, if, it, if you're using a, a 2.8 version, then that shouldn't be an issue. It'll like be in the right order. But you can just drag the blend shapes back into order in Blender if you need to. But anyway, so I have that set up and I have all the parameters set up for it. So now this blend tree is named... Hold in tail move. So anyway, we're going to put these back to zero and I'm going to go back into the scene. And now to have that work the way we want, we're going to go into the already set up. So tail move H and under here we have tail move V and now We've created tail move H, tail move V. I think that's what I called them, right? Let me check. Parameters, animator parameters, tail move H and V, yes. So now um, what I'm gonna do is go into the UI menu and we're gonna add a new control, tail move, tail, I'm gonna call it tail. And this one we're going to make a two axis puppet. And we're not gonna name or label any of these, but we're gonna make horizontal tail move H and vertical tail move V. So now we're gonna build and publish and I'm gonna show you something real quick cause I'm expecting this not to work. And this uh, goes back to what I said about um, needing to like separate the um, gesture from the effects layer. So after I demonstrate this, I'm going to um, do that. Cause I'm anticipating this isn't going to work for or the avatar is going to have an issue with this. Mm. Hi, Nylisher. Ye. Also, all those all those particles and such should work too now. I mean, as long as like it's set up correct. Yeah, I think it's set up correctly. It should be. All right. All right. So if I go into gestures, many expressions, articles, this one I'm gonna have to actually like. There's my headphones, there's my pants coming off, and the tail. 
But now you see how it is. Um, I set it up. So now you can see how that works, like real quick. But yeah. So now if I want to, I could just like wag that tail. Now, um, as I was saying before, like one of these gestures controls the tail and it's not working right now because the tail is already being controlled by the gesture or like or from the tail control. So, so the control from the gesture that controls the tail isn't working because the tails are already being controlled this way. Now, if I want to fix that, I would have to do this correctly. And to do this correctly, what I would do is I would take the expressions I made, or the override I made here, and I would duplicate it a few times and just keep this here for like safekeeping, basically. So I call this one Kima Overrides FX, and this one Kima Overrides Gestures. Now, remember what I said in the beginning, how anything on the gestures layer can only be like bone transforms and anything on the effects layer can be anything that isn't bone transforms. So what I'm gonna do here is under the gestures one, we're going to delete, um, so this one's the gestures layer. So this, we're going to delete headphones, particles, pants, and we're just gonna leave right hand and left hand. Now for this one, the effects layer, we're going to delete tail wiggle, we're gonna keep particles, pants, and we're gonna keep right hand and left hand. So now that I've done that, and I still have this as like a backup just in case I wanna add stuff that has everything on it. And now that we've gone here and we've put the gestures one on gestures, this on effects, if I build and test this one, um, everything should work fine. Yes, I, yes, I animated the, the tail down going in between the legs. Because um, if it's on a joystick, you can control it so that half of it is like basically flat. But if you want to put it in between the legs, you can do that too. Like, um, th this is all based on like just bone animation. So I pre-animated each of those like different like stages. And like, so I, I, can, I can demonstrate this too. I'll demonstrate this after this is built. Because I'm pretty sure this is it. This is the finished thing, the finished product. Yes. I wonder if gestures for They should. Avatar built. We have chat. Avatar. So yeah, just, you can animate anything on the avatar, and as long as you understand how the parameters work, um, yeah, your, the VR chat is your playground with that. So anyway, now that I've done this, if I were to put the tail to the side or whatever, like yeah, but I set it up so that um, I can put it into the legs in the extreme, or I can put it just down like this. But now if I do that, and then I use the gestures, you can see my tail is actually like moving again, like with the gestures, like how it was supposed to initially. But yes, anyway, um, that's... I basically covered everything I wanted to cover, like I just wanted to make this a basic, basic thing. And I think I did. Like how how long did that take me? Like an hour, give or take? An hour thirty.